We'll see you in Riker. You see, Riker's mark on the sport has been extraordinary. A gifted athlete with a successful 37-0 kickboxing career behind her, Riker took the 1990s boxing world by storm when she entered the fray with skills that forever ended the notion that women couldn't box with the same level of competitive prowess as men. She was also the star of the documentary Shadow Boxers, providing many audience members not only their first view of boxing, but of the life of a female professional fighter at the beginning of what turned out to be an illustrious career. A boxing champion, Lucia retired from the sport with a perfect 17-0 record, but not before having gained renown for playing the notorious Billy the Blue Bear yeah. Yeah. in Clint Eastwood's film, Million Dollar Baby. It was my intention that that role scared people so much that they didn't want to see anything more boxing in Just kidding. She also choreographed the fight scenes um, to give it the believability that we saw on screen. Riker continues to inspire others through her work as a professional trainer and life coach, most recently cornering champion Diane Prozik, and remains pound for pound one of the best boxers to have ever raised the square circle, male or female. Please join me in Inaugural International Women's Boxing Hall of Fame inductee, Lucia Riker. Good afternoon. Wow. I'm honored to be here with all of you and all the great champions and all the great future champions. Um, I didn't know what you were going to show, so. Um, I also like seeing all the other women and what they've done and uh, what they're doing today and how much they're giving back to the new generation. Thank you so much for that. Um, thank you, Regina, for making boxing great in Europe. You're an amazing fighter. Um, you've done amazing work. You're a beautiful woman. You represent boxing very well. Thank you. Thank you, Chevelle, for giving me that opportunity. Actually, I played to Eastwood to watch Shadow Boxers, and he used that scene from Shadow Boxers in Million Dollar Baby, but he created me in the scene. So, <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> thank you, Christy Martin. Thank you so much for being in this world of uh, women's boxing. Um, you are my drive, you know, I. Uh, I needed a focus point. I wanted to fight you. I wanted to beat you. I chased you. I tried to get you. And God prevented me. He took me out on my knee stand and right before the big fight that could have put women's boxing on the map. And us both uh, be proud to show a legitimate fight for women's boxing at that time. Thank you. Um, I had a T on myself, which is a minor stroke in 08. Um, I train other people now, that's what I love, I coach, I try to pass on my knowledge to a new generation. I'm sorry of what happened to you, between you and your husband, and God bless his soul, um, and God bless you. Um, I want to thank all my trainers. My first trainer was an insane man, but a great trainer. <laughs> Very sick man. Um, I'll save you all the details. Um, some some trainers don't know their boundaries, and uh, it's important for men to know their boundaries, and he did. So, for the male trainers out there, um, watch your boundaries with your women. It's really important. It's easy for a young woman to look up to men uh, as a father figure, and. Uh, it's important to be the mentor and to stay the mentor and leave it like that. So thank you for that. Um, 
still I thank him for the discipline he taught me and the strength he gave me. Uh, the self-discipline helped me to start a career in America. I moved here with a suitcase of clothing, with a dream. I had a dream as a child. I was seven years old. I watched TV. And I watched the rumble in the jungle of Muhammad Ali in Syria. And I pointed at the TV and I said, that's what I'm going to do. And everybody laughed at me and said, oh yeah, not for girls. Get out of the way. Um, I kept that dream. I started karate, judo. I fenced. I was an uh, all-star softball. Uh, and, uh, and when I had a chance to put in my gloves, it, my first gloves were kickboxing gloves because that was allowed for women at those days. So I picked up kickboxing and I got four world titles. And, uh, my total record is 54 and 0. I always feel a little embarrassed when I say 17 and 0 because that's just boxing. But you know, kickboxing is, a, is an amazing sport as well. Um, it teaches self discipline comes from the martial arts, which is really important to develop yourself and your personality. And be, without the kickboxing, I could have never have boxed. Um, I moved here with all the knowledge I had. I started my career knocking on doors, and like most of you know, most trainers said no. Um, I had to knock out guys one after another at the Wusun gym to prove that I could fight. And yeah, it wasn't fun. I didn't think it was funny. Um, <laughs> It was sad, because I liked the guys, and but I wanted a career, so I had to do what I had to do. But, uh, so that was the beginning of my career, and then, uh, you know, I wanted to be the best female fighter in the world. That was my goal. Uh, I always thought you, you know, you need to be the best you can possibly be, and you need others to do that for you, so it's not necessarily about knocking somebody down. It's about bringing out your fullest potential as an athlete, whatever athlete you are, fighter, whatever sport you do, or whatever you do in life, do it good, do it 200%, and let it bring out your fullest potential. And that's what the sport did for me. It was my education, it taught me everything I know, I traveled the world, I learned so much about myself, about other cultures. Um, I became a Buddhist, and because I became a Buddhist, I tried to look at boxing in a different way than I did before. I used to want to kill my opponent. I, I could care less, I just wanted to beat you and knock you out. And when I became a Buddhist, I thought, hey, I need you to bring out my potential. So with all the respect, I stepped through the ropes and wanted to show my fullest potential. And that's why you need an opponent. And that's why I love this sport so much. So after my unfortunate injury um, in June 2005, a couple of weeks later, my mom died. So I had some time to reflect on my life. What do I really want? And the hardest part for an athlete um, is to retire, but for a boxer it's even worse because you're a gladiator and they've done research on extreme sports and extreme sports create an addiction. Yes, it is an addiction. <laughs> um, however, as an addiction you have to come off your addiction, um, but as a fighter you have to come off the fame, you know, your identity, you build an identity. I am a champion, hey champ, what's your next fight, hey champ? So, once you have become that identity, it's hard to let it go. Besides the addiction, the physical addiction of the heart training and the focus and the extremeness. So, there's this movie, I don't know if some of you might have seen it, it's called What the Bleak Do You Know? Who's seen that movie? Yes. Yeah. In that movie, they talk about receptors in the brain. And when you're an extreme athlete, those receptors get fed. And when you stop, so you retire, those receptors no longer get fed, so you get in trouble with, you know, fighting on the street or alcohol or any type of other st stuff that gets you sex addiction, alcohol addiction, gamble addiction, you name it, to go extreme again. Actually, they've done research that the withdrawal from extreme sports, so not feeding the receptor for six weeks, is the same as coming off heroin. So for all of you, once you come off an extreme sport, you will go through a draw that can be really painful. Besides, you might not know who you are next to your titles. So I always say to new people, it's important to build self-esteem, not just self-confidence based on titles and status or money, right? Self-esteem is what stays. The self-confidence based on status and titles and money might go. So I encourage people who teach others and the new generation to build self-esteem and help the kids, the new generation, to build self-esteem and not just self-confidence. 
based on their titles and their accomplishments. Because that makes it harder when you stop, when you retire, to have a life after boxing. Um, what else did I want to say? I want to thank Seth, Sue Fox. Sue Fox, I remember when she started the website, and uh, we were back and forth on email, and I was sometimes upset about what she wrote. Um, but I'm so grateful, because Sue Fox really created like a center point for all the women to, worldwide to come together and know about each other. In those days, it was so hard to know about other women. You know, the internet was not that popular yet, but we had a point where we could see, hey, there are other women out there that work as hard as I do, that actually are really good out there. And you really helped women's boxing, you know, and, and especially with this International Boxing Hall of Fame, the first one, you know, I've been to the male one, and this is our first one, and I'm really proud to be here. This is historical, this is so important for us women, for the women that went before us, but also for all the women that come after us. Another thing I wanted to say, what I was proud of, I went to the Olympics in 2012, and I have to say, at one point, I was thinking, shall I go, shall I not go? I was kind of waiting for an invitation, because I thought, you know, I fought so hard for women's boxing to be accepted, and, you know, I spoke a lot in the media about women's boxing in the Olympics, and nobody believed in it, and it will come, 2012, it will come, and nobody believed it. And then it came, and then, all those people that said, oh, women box will never be in the Olympics, were front row at the Olympics. And I'm like, excuse me, and I had to buy a ticket to go to the Olympics. Okay? So I was like, I'm going to be watching women's boxing from the TV? I don't think so. So I called everyone I knew worldwide. How do I get to uh, the Olympics 2012? How do I get tickets? I wanted my trip funded, I want a hotel funded. I had people offer me their houses in London to come. And then I called Emmanuel Stewart, one of my mentors. And I didn't know at that time he already had cancer. He picked up the phone and I said, Emmanuel, I want to go to the Olympics. You know, this is my dream. He said, get on the phone, book a ticket right now, here's my credit card. Wow. That was the last time I spoke with him. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he never told me he had cancer. Great mentor, um, but I got I had I, I had the opportunity to go to the Olympics. So here I'm sitting, uh, still rumbling and hustling for tickets. Uh, you know, USA Boxing gave me um, a third row ticket at at some point. I think the half finals, and I sat there and I felt these were my children. I don't have children, so I thought these were my children, and I was so proud of the level of boxing that was performed in 2012 Olympics. I sat there and I thought, wow, this is better than every time, any time I ever fought. When I heard 70,000 people roar a female's name, that was my dream. That was unbelievable. These were these little girls and with t-shirts with women on it. That was unheard of for me. So I wish all the women in, uh, that go to Brazil all the best. And I hope women's boxing keep evolving, that we get more weight classes and more opportunities for all women out of all weight classes, because we all deserve a chance in the Olympics. And then I hope we create amazing professionals. And, and I know Clarissa Shields came home with the gold medal. And I know the gold medal winners in England, and I know the bronze medal winner in India got offered a, a boxing academy in, in India, and they wrote a movie about our life. So I still think that we did not fully acknowledge Clarissa Shields in America. When I came back to America and I asked anybody, do you know we want gold? And they're like, in women's boxing? Like, oh really? Does women's boxing exist? Oh, I didn't know it was not in the Olympics. People still didn't know. I wanted everyone to know that we had the first female gold medal winner in the Olympics. Not enough women knew. So let's hope that in Brazil, everybody knows when we bring home gold. Thank you so much.